Just a few days ago, we were celebrating our nation's independence, and today we're celebrating the independent spirit, doing a little people watching, looking for folks who take pride in their passions, each one unique and interesting. Our kickoff story features a local teen who isn't afraid to roll up his sleeves and dive into dough. Still in high school, he's a boss baker. Do you find that you're the only guy in the group that's making cakes? Yeah, I haven't really met any other cake makers. Next up, a cake coral nail tech who clawed her way to the top of a reality TV competition show, proving once and for all that she's a polished performer. The episode took about a week to film and it was grueling. It was up at 6 a.m. and you're going to bed at midnight maybe. And that was every day. And if you made, if you have won the episode, you get to go to the finals and they call you back. We're not done yet. This guy, he pickles peppers and other veggies and fruits. His penchant for preserving is apparent. I add like mustard seed, coriander, some allspice, maybe some cloves, whatever I've got in the spice cabinet at the time. And then I fill, I also put grape leaves in there to provide tannins, which helps keep the pickle um, crunchy. We'll have those stories along with the latest in our Positively Healthy Medical series. I'm Amy Osher, and this is Behind the Headlines. I'm Amy Osher. Thanks for joining us. It's a sweet way to make a buck and make people happy at the same time. A Fort Myers teen is taking a liking to cake baking. Some of his treats look too good to eat. First, I cut around the edges just to separate it from the pan. And then I have parchment paper on the bottom so it comes right out. And I set this aside and get the second one out. Baking cakes is serious business for Adam Oates Lotridge. This 14-year-old from Fort Myers is putting his good taste to good use. I usually have a cake per weekend, sometimes two. While other kids his age are mowing lawns or babysitting, he's cooking up plans to deliver homemade, hand-decorated cakes to his customers. Make no mistake, it's work. First, I start planning three days ahead of when it's due. I start with making a fondant if it's necessary for the cake decorating and then I make the batter and the frosting and then on the last day I cook the batter so it's fresh and I piece it all together and decorate it and then I hand it over. A high school freshman, his sweet nature makes Adam stand out. Do you find that you're the only guy in the group that's making cakes? Yeah, I haven't really met any other cake makers. A self-taught baker, he churned through recipes to find ones he liked. I just do two sticks of butter and three cups of sugar. And sharpened his skills watching videos. I like to put some on this. It's like a flat kind of palette thing. I'm not quite sure what to call it. His family not only supports him, it was mom who got the ball rolling. I had the idea to cut back on the processed sweets and so I made them a deal. They could have all the sweets they want as long as they baked it themselves. Fast forward about a year and Adam's become quite the cake boss. He took it to the next level. For that one, I use fondant and I cut out each individual animal. The passion he pours in is clear. For chocolate frostings, I have a, like a mousse kind of frosting. You'll never go hungry, that's for sure. On top of earning extra dough, baking satisfies Adam's creativity. I think cakes I really like more than all other sweets. The combinations you can make with the frosting and the actual cake are just endless. 
fingernails are her canvas, and nail tech from Fort Myers clawed her way to the top of her field. Part of the process included performing under pressure, and she nailed it. These are our glitter acrylics, so it's our acrylic colors that build into the nail. Welcome to Ashley Craig's world. It's a bright, colorful, made-for-TV setting. Chromes, foils, paint, anything, you name it, we have it. For over a decade, she's called this Cape Coral Salon home, and it was right here four years ago that her life took an unexpected twist. And how did you hear there was going to be a nail competition TV show in the first place? I didn't even know. I had no clue. I was actually here working in the salon, and I saw a Facebook message come through asking me, you know, we thought you'd be interested. We've been watching you for a while, and we'd like you to interview for this reality show coming out. From there started the process of filing down a large field of nail techs from across the U.S. for an Oxygen Network TV show called Nailed It. I did my Skype interview wearing a tiara because it was my birthday, and that was kind of how I set the tone. Um, and they liked me. And then the next thing I know, they were sending me paperwork. The competition was, well, tough as nails. So Ashley brought her A-game. Just to get on the show, she had to show off her handiwork, making an over-the-top nail ornament out of acrylic. I did a sculpted a carousel horse that went up and down on a nail. And then it was just after that I went through another step and another step. Already an accomplished nail artist, Ashley made it on the show, joining 17 other finalists in L.A. to start production. The episode took about a week to film, and it was grueling. It was up at 6 a.m., and you're going to bed at midnight, maybe. And that was every day. And if you made, if you won the episode, you get to go to the finals, and they call you back. With one wind in hand, the finale in a $100,000 payday was within grasp. What was it like um, trying to do your thing with cameras and lights and producers running around? Nerve-wracking. I mean, having, there was a camera, I think, five cameras on each of us at one time, not including what's in the studio. Finally, it came down to Ashley and one other tech, and it was a real nail-biter, with Ashley taking the title. But I, never in a million years I thought I would actually win, so when it happened, I was... I mean, I, on stage, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. The hardest part may have been coming back to the salon and keeping it on the down low. There was a lot of buzz because um, you can't say anything. You keep your mouth shut till the show comes out, and that was well over six months. After a half year quietly going about her business, the secret was out and the world was at her fingertips. Did you consider like going to New York or going to L.A. or Miami or somewhere um, and taking your game out? I did. I almost went to L.A. twice and as far as I wanted to go to New York. In the end, Ashley decided to home base here and take her show on the road, sidelining as a nail artist at New York Fashion Week. I started working for a division of Revlon for about two years, doing New York Fashion Week every six months. So I was traveling back and forth and working with designers such as the Blondes, Libertine, um, Jeremy Scott. Did the show change your life or your trajectory? It's still unbelievable to me that that actually happened to me and I'm just very grateful and I'm humbled by the experience and the people I've met and the opportunities that I've gotten from the show. As for the Oxygen TV show, Nailed It lasted only one season before the network put the nail in the coffin ending the series, making Ashley Craig the one and only winner. I am perfectly fine with that. There's nothing, I'll always be the one. So yeah, you're the reigning champ. I am the reigning champ. Fermented foods are quite trendy these days, popular for its health benefits. Using this method of pickling, a Fort Myers man started with cucumbers and now pickles just about everything in his path. My name is Brian Just and I'm a plant breeder by profession, but I'm a fermentation revivalist and I like to pickle things. A proud pickler, Brian Just is a wizard with a fermentation crock. Well, you can really, you can really pickle almost any vegetable you can think of. Um, but the ones that I do most commonly, I like cucumbers, pickled cucumbers, which most people just call a pickle, and uh, cabbages, like I like to do sauerkrauts. Um, but I, I usually mix a few things, a few other things in there other than cabbage, too. Like the one I have over there has kale mixed into it and shredded rutabaga as well. Nothing escapes his grasp or his sense of fun. I do pickle peppers, and I have here, I have some hot peppers pickled. Brian's briny veggies are far different than what you'll find on store shelves. Most of those are vinegar-based. His are fermented. It creates a different reaction. What I do is I do fermented pickles, which it, it just provides a different acid. It's a, it's, a, it's a process by which the bacteria that naturally exist in the vegetables 
you culture them by putting it in, into a brine solution. And the, the bacteria then ferment the sugars that are in the cucumbers and the, the byproduct of that kind of fermentation is lactic acids. His passion for pickling is clear and he clearly relishes the process. So really what you do is you just start out by filling out. You don't need a fermentation crock, but it really helps a lot. So, and I've got three different sizes of these. I have a five gallon, I've got a three gallon and this one gallon one. Um, and you, base, you fill it up with the vegetable that you're going to ferment and then you pour a salt water mixture on top and then you can add various spices. I add, I add like mustard seed, coriander, some allspice, maybe some cloves, whatever I've got in the spice cabinet at the time. And then I, fill, I also put grape leaves in there to provide tannins, which helps keeps the pickle um, crunchy. And then so you, you pour the water, the salt water and, the, um, you know, and your spices and your additives in there and then you put these weights on top and then you cover it up like that and you just and then you wait. Most things are ready in a week or so. I brought you out a couple of different things. I have a regular a jar of just straight up you know pickled baby cucumbers and you can see all the different spices in there. The homebrew varieties are brightly colored. Now this is a pickled this is a pickled hot pepper. It's a pickled wax pepper and um, I, I put it in a glass so you can you can see the color of the brine is it's pink. And chock full of goodness. This is a, a, a sauerkraut that I made. You'd think his family would enjoy the pickings. My wife loves pickles, loves to eat my pickles. My daughter loves to eat my pickles, but my son still, still doesn't really care for them that much. So. To make his point, he assembled the fam plus a friend to taste test. Okay, you ready? Go for it. They didn't get past his fermented ginger beer, except daughter Frankie, who kind of shares his pastime. He keeps it mostly in the man cave fridge. As for 10-year-old Owen, he turns up his nose to everything. <laughs> because I'm a picky person. Their friend Anna Lucia is a little prickly about it. I don't like pickles, <laughs> so... I didn't want to try stuff. But I don't like pickles. But the one thing you tried, you kind of liked? A little bit. <laughs> it was yeah. spicy. There's one last item on the table, fermented milk. This one is one of my favorite ones. It's called kefir, and it's made slightly different. You, you add, um, this one is made by a fermenting milk. It's just regular organic milk that I use, whole milk. And I put in these, um, these, these little things here, which are, they're, they're small cultures of bacteria and yeast cells kind of mixed together. Even the dog won't try that one. But for Brian, it's a blend of perfect imprecision, piqued by the prospect of something new and delicious. I don't measure anything. I just, I just like reach in and I taste them. And if they taste good enough, then they're done. When we come back, a passion for hair cutting. It's all in the family. Maybe it's why this barber shop feels like home. That story is after the break. Life here is amazing, and so is the joint care. At the Total Joint Center at Physicians Regional Healthcare System, we've changed the experience of joint replacement for good. With our comprehensive joint care program, most hip and knee replacement patients return home in just two days because we know you want to get on with your active life. Pain-free living starts at Physicians Regional Medical Center Collier Boulevard and Physicians Regional Medical Center Pine Ridge. Hiring the right moving company is important. Best Moving and Storage is a family-owned and operated business serving Southwest Florida for over 22 years. From our free in-home estimate until the last piece of furniture is in your new place or stored in our climate-controlled warehouse, we treat you like family. Best Moving and Storage is fully licensed and insured with all of our employees being certified drivers and packers. When it comes to protecting your treasured belongings, choose a company that's experienced and trustworthy. Call Best Moving and Storage today at 239-592-6565. My name is Steve Unser and cabinetry is my specialty. I have been creating custom designed cabinetry for 20 years in Southwest Florida. And now I am celebrating the grand opening of our new Naples showroom. Steve Unser Cabinetry will help you design your kitchen, bath, or home office with stunning results. Offering the best quality of cabinets with a wide variety of design options and pricing to fit any budget. If your kitchen isn't becoming to you, you should be coming to us. Now two locations to serve you. 
The summer months are prime time to get out and enjoy the sunshine, but it can be too much of a good thing. Truth is, many of us aren't doing our sun protection properly, and it's putting us at risk. Here's the latest in this week's Positively Healthy. Even with the best of intentions, many people fall short when it comes to sun protection. Not using sunscreen properly could be sabotaging their skin care. You want to apply it to all of your exposed areas. Um, and if you're going to be exposed more than two hours, you want to reapply it. And that's the part that people really forget to do. You can't get too much of a good thing, so be generous. Scrimping on sunscreen only shortchanges its effectiveness, says board-certified dermatologist Jacqueline Thomas. You want to make sure you have enough on your skin. Think of either a shot glass full or a golf ball full, whichever is easy for you to remember. Um, and that should be applied to your entire body. And if you use a spray rather than a lotion, take the time to get it right. It's a uh, spray on your hands, put it on your face, and then walk away. Uh, and then spray it on, on your whole body. Just make sure you rub it in really well so you get the coverage that you need. A mistake many people make is trying to get in a little sun before putting on protection in the hopes a tan will keep them from burning. Dr. Thomas finds the logic misguided. The base tan is not a good idea. You should apply sunscreen at least 15 minutes before going outside. That includes the often forgotten spots like ears, lips, feet, and scalp, which you can cover with a hat. More than three inches is recommended um, and covering your entire circumferential, uh, not just a, a baseball hat. And if you do wear a baseball hat, that's great, but don't forget to protect your chin and your ears. Finally, dermatologists recommend an SPF of 30 or higher, which protects against 97% of harmful rays. The broad spectrum are the ones that you want to find, and the broad spectrum covers both UVA and UVV light, which is uh, harmful to you in both methods. Some causes burning and some causes aging, and both of those things are bad. Barber shops have always been known as a place to hang out and get a cut or shave along with some friendly conversation. But one local shop is a sheer delight. Ashley Collins wrote up this story for the Daily News, featuring the Naples Park Barbershop, manned by father and son, Bob and Andrew Johns. It's a family-owned business. Dad Bob's been in the barbering biz for years. He eventually brought his son into the shop and the pair now share and shear together. They have a loyal following who feel like part of the family, right down to bickering and debating everything from sports to politics. You can read all about it by checking out Ashley's story at naplesnews.com. Our reporters are always on the lookout for interesting and meaningful stories. Here's a preview of what they're covering on the beat. Thanks, Amy. Hi, I'm Shelby Reynolds. I'm a features reporter at the Naples Daily News. This week, I'll be getting a behind the scenes look at the new Cirque du Soleil production of Crystal, which begins July 12th at Germain Arena. This will be the first time that Cirque is doing a performance on ice. So I get a look at the costumes, the acrobatics, and all the new challenges that come along with performing on ice. You can follow along by following Naples Daily News on Instagram or visiting naplesnews.com. I'm Harriet Heithouse, arts and entertainment writer for the Naples Daily News and naplesnews.com. We have a lot of arts in Collier County, but we don't exactly know where they're going or where they've been. So the county has commissioned an arts and culture master plan. What does that entail? Find out in today's Naples Daily News and NaplesNews.com. Hello, my name is Patrick Riley and I'm a reporter with the Naples Daily News. This week I've been working on a story about the Hardy R. Mills Post 135 in East Naples. After Hurricane Irma flooded and damaged the post, it was closed for months. It finally reopened this week and welcomed members back. You can find the story online at NaplesNews.com. And it wouldn't be a Sunday morning if we didn't have a visit from Brent Batten. Here's our weekly commentary. Brent. Thanks, Amy. I saw a story in the paper the other day debunking the old myth that you should wait an hour after eating before going swimming. Nothing about eating or digesting food makes drowning or accidents any more likely, scientists have confirmed. So, what we kids suspected all along was true. Parents were just saying that so they could relax for an hour without having to worry about watching us swim. How many hours of pool time did I miss out on over the years, sitting on a blanket, 
watching the minutes crawl by, all because I had a couple of french fries. Now we have to question some of the other advice our parents passed off as conventional wisdom. The early bird gets the worm. Well, frankly, I'm not really into worms. You know what I'm into? Sleep. What's the point of getting up at 5 a.m.? Am I going to conduct business or have fun with my friends at that hour? My guess is sleep deprivation is a bigger risk than missing out on a chance to get a worm. Don't swallow gum. It stays in your body for seven years. What? Gum knows some secret hiding place in your intestines where it can evade the movement of food through your system? Gum may not be nutritious, but don't tell me it's cunning. If you drop food on the floor, you have five seconds to pick it up before it's no good. So, mom's saying germs are on the floor, waiting to sprint to a piece of dropped food and attach themselves. Whatever germs the food lands on are already there. They attach themselves immediately. They're not calling their friends and telling them to rush over to join the party. Money doesn't grow on trees. Mom and dad got a lot of other things wrong. What if they miss this one too? If you'll excuse me, I need to go out for a walk in the woods. I'm Brent Batten. Be sure to read my columns on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays in the Naples Daily News. Check me out on Facebook, and as always, thanks for watching. Coming up, a lot of people have lots to say. Now they have a platform to share their thoughts. An up-close look at blogging, that's ahead on Behind the Headlines. The area's only 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means you'll find less waiting for the care you need. And because we're full service hospitals, a lot more care if you need it. Less waiting, faster care. Only at Physicians Regional Healthcare System. My name is Steve Unser and cabinetry is my specialty. I have been creating custom designed cabinetry for 20 years in Southwest Florida. And now I'm celebrating the grand opening of our new Naples showroom. Steve Unser Cabinetry will help you design your kitchen, bath, or home office with stunning results. Offering the best quality of cabinets with a wide variety of design options and pricing to fit any budget. If your kitchen isn't becoming to you, you should be coming to us. Now two locations to serve you. Life here is amazing, and so is the joint care. At the Total Joint Center at Physicians Regional Healthcare System, we've changed the experience of joint replacement for good. With our comprehensive joint care program, most hip and knee replacement patients return home in just two days because we know you want to get on with your active life. Pain-free living starts at Physicians Regional Medical Center Collier Boulevard and Physicians Regional Medical Center Pine Ridge. Is your auto insurance keeping pace with your life? Ask for a AAA triple check insurance review to see if your current policy is still a good fit. An agent will assess changes in your life, like new vehicles or drivers. Make sure you've got the right coverage and all the discounts you deserve. They'll also see how a AAA membership can round out your protection on the road. Plus, provide roadside assistance, discounts, free services, and vacation extras. Ask for your AAA triple check today. It's never been so easy to share your thoughts with the world. Whether or not anyone is listening, that's a different story. But these people and many others like them remain hopeful that their sites will find followings in the blogosphere. And have you actually used it? I haven't used it yet, but I'm thinking about it. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Doing a blog and oops. What better place to percolate ideas than a coffee shop? Every couple of weeks, a group of Southwest Florida bloggers meet up at the grind. And you know, nowadays we use exclamation points when it's not truly what you're, you know, what you're yes. supposed to. Like. Yeah. Anja Carlson spent the last few years fine-tuning her blog, Real Recipes, and more. I talk about sort of what made me think of the the recipe or how I developed the recipe a lot. Like maybe I, you know, I tried someone else's recipe and then I adjusted or um, maybe I looked up 10 other recipes and I thought, no, I don't like any of those ingredients. Her creation sprang from a love of baking. And I thought, well, this is an interest that I have and I knew a lot of people were, were doing food blogs. So I thought, well, that's just what I'm going to do. Is it more work than you thought it would be? Yes, it's actually a ton more work than I could ever have imagined. 
For every post, she cooks up an original recipe, which she makes, photographs, and blogs about. Same concept again and again and again. What's your end goal? Is it to get people to come to your blog, to read it, enjoy it, or to make money on it? Um, initially, it was to make money. So, you know, that was kind of what I had heard, that you can post affiliate links and you can have, have advertising. And, um, <clears throat> but I've kind of given up a little bit on the making any money part of it. By contrast, Rosalind Pastrana isn't in it for the dough. She simply wants to get her words out there. Her blog features the things she wouldn't dare say out loud. It's called self-censored. Um, what kinds of topics have you covered so far? Um, pretty much, uh, the most recent one I did was a little a little bit of politics, a little bit of religion, which is why I censor it. <laughs> Nothing like just jumping right in there with exactly. the things that you don't talk about at a dinner exactly. party. Exactly, and that's just... This that's is just... her second shot at blogging. Rosalind loves to write. The other skills that come along with blogging are still a work in progress. Did you have to learn other stuff too as far as publishing, maybe taking pictures, working with graphics? I'm working on it. Like I said, I've just restarted about a month ago, and that's why I joined here, uh, this kind of meetup so that I can get a little bit more tips and, and things like that. No, no, that's why he wants to get something oh, that's yeah, usable because exactly. he wants to turn it into a blog. Yeah. And so right now it's just like this kind of static page with contact link and a couple images. And yeah, yeah. Like Blogs are a personal expression, each one as unique as the one who produces it. It's about sending thoughts out into the universe, hoping someone will pick up its meaning. You know, I've had people that have tried the recipes and they say they're wonderful and it makes me feel good. Finally today, from the virtual landscape to reality, a collection of conceptual sculptures are missing from the lawn of Artist Naples. As part of a $150 million expansion project, the artwork was temporarily put in storage. As you can imagine, great care went into taking apart the iconic Walking Jackman piece. So we time-lapsed its removal. Here's the art of dismantling. Time for us to disappear as well. As always, thank you for making this show part of your day. Feel free to catch up on past editions by logging on to naplesnews.com. On the homepage, scroll down to quick links and select behind the headlines. I'm Amy Osher, see you back here next week.